Okay, everybody introduce themselves. Learn something new? How many of you, raise your hand if everybody in your grouping um, was initiated in the same month? Okay, what month was that? Somebody tell me. April. April and May. Was there anybody in this room who was not um, initiated in April or May? Shout, give me some shout outs. What, what month? March? October? February. February? All right. Anybody else? March. So you can see that we may have all been initiated, but some of us maybe had a little more time to get acclimated to our chapter if we were in October or February or March, maybe more so than our folks in April or May. So something to think about in terms of initiation as we talk more about that this weekend is we don't all get initiated at the same time, and what does that mean, um, and what can we learn from other chapters who get initiated a little bit differently. So these people that you're with, either the two person or the, the other one person or two people, um, is now your high five buddy or buddies for the rest of the conference. So practice high fiving, go, go. <laughs> Okay, thank you for that. So whenever you see this person or people um, in the hallway or at a meal or in the restroom, um, feel free to give them a big high five. So practice one more time, one more time. All right, then you can have a seat for me wherever you would like. And as Megan mentioned earlier, one of the reasons that we talk a little bit about Mortarboard 101 is the importance of getting everybody on the same page. We just want to make sure that we all know about Mortarboard and know the history. And Sanja and I are going to try and do this in the most fun, interactive, keep you moving, keep you going. We know we are what's standing between you and dinner type of thing. Um, but one of the things I would like to ask is who thinks they know a little bit about Mortarboard? And we will start with if you could stand up if you think Mortarboard was founded in 1915. Oh, you guys are good. 1916? 1918? Good job. Good job. You guys studied at home. Yes, we were founded in 1918. And another question is going to come from Sanja. All right, question number two. Stand if you think you can name the four founding chapters of Mortarboard. There are four. If you think you can name all four, be brave and stand up. Or you could take a risk and guess. We can do that too. Anybody? Anybody? Okay, what if, what if somebody can name one? Oh, oh, I didn't see you. Yes, sir. Tell us your name and where you're from. Uh, University of Michigan, Patrick Parkinson. Um, that's my school, uh, <laughs> as well as one of the founding schools, I believe. Yep. Um, University of Chicago, or maybe? <laughs> Not one of the founding four, maybe one of the first ones, though. Okay. But Michigan is one. That's good. That's the one I got. All right, Michigan. Yes. <laughs> Who? Yes, ma'am. Tell us your name. Where you're from? Hi, my name is Karen. I'm from University of Toledo in Toledo, Ohio. And another founding one is the Ohio State University. Yes, ma'am, it is. Thank you. So Ohio State and Michigan, there are two more. Anybody want to guess those? Yes? No? Yes? Cornell. Cornell? Yes. And over here? Yes, ma'am. So those are the four. Those are the four. So good job. Give yourselves a round of applause. That was a team effort. I like the team effort. So Ohio State, Michigan, Cornell, and Swarthmore are our four founding chapters. Swarthmore and Swarthmore. I don't know how to say it. And it's an, also an interesting to note, there was a fifth chapter who originally attended the founding or the discussion of the founding, but that chapter withdrew when it wasn't going to be a Greek letter name. The next question is, why is it important that there were four founding chapters? Anybody want to try and come up with an answer for that or a good guess? Yes, over there. And if you could stand up, was that, you weren't raising your hand, were you? I could be a bad auctioneer. Yes, over here. If you can stand up and tell us your name and your school and be as loud as you can. I'm Libby. I'm from Illinois State University. I have no idea, but maybe it's because there's four corners on a mortarboard hat. I don't think that's right. <laughs> I never thought of that one. Okay. And I felt like we needed to do the Libby when you, you stood up. That was great. Um, anybody else have an idea? 
Well, one of the big things is when they came together, there was more solidarity and there was more of a union. So if you think of local organizations and the importance of having a national organization and what that can do in terms of momentum and solidarity. And one of the interesting things at that time, especially in the early 1900s, women were definitely a minority on their campuses. And we recently went to the archives um, which are housed at Ohio State, and it was fascinating to read some of the early reports and what mortar boards were working on. One of their big projects at several chapters was actually lighting in women's bathrooms. They were kind of like dungeons because there weren't many women on campus. So you can see how mortar board has filled a need on campuses in terms of making campuses better places, especially for students. So just some interesting little trivia for you. All right, now I'm gonna test your math. A skill I'm not good at, I will, I will own that. But um, how many chapters do you think we have um, chartered today? So it's been 94 years. So how many total chapters do you think have been charted in those 94 years? You can raise your hand, you can, yeah. Tell us where you're from, what's your name? Uh, Alex, I'm from University of Akron, Ohio, and I think it's 190. Close, we did say that number earlier today. That is true, that is how many people are here. But how many people do, you, another guess, a little bit higher maybe, I'm gonna give you a, a clue, um, do you think are chartered? Anybody else wanna guess? Anybody? Throw out a number, somebody throw me a number. 203, anybody else? 97? All right, you're all around the ballpark, right? Um, the answer is uh, 229. So that is how many chapters um, have been chartered all around this country uh, of mortar boards. So you can see, you may think, oh, I'm by myself on my campus. False. Um, there are 228 other campuses besides yours that have a chartered chapter. Oh, it's still me. Ah, oh, false. Okay. So what is mortar board? So we have 229 chapters, but what do they do? What does it mean? All that kind of stuff. Um, mortar board is a nat national college honor society. So like we, I just talked about, it's not just you and your campus. Um, it's all of us all over the country. And you can see that by all the shirts you're wearing today. Um, you don't just come from one region or um, from one school, you come from all over the country. Um, it is an honor to be a part of this organization. Um, not everybody that applied on your campuses necessarily got in. Um, not everybody that um, wanted to be in is there. It's also a privilege. It's a privilege to be honored by a national organization. It's a privilege to serve our campuses and our communities. Um, and it's a privilege to um, strive for the ideals that Bridget's gonna talk about in a minute. Um, it's also a call to action and service. So it's not just, oh, awesome, I get to put this on my resume, bullet mortarboard. No, um, that's not what we want you to leave here with. What we want you to leave here with is a call for action. It's saying, I am a person who believes in this organization. I believe in scholarship. I believe in leadership. I believe in service. And I want to impart those ideals to other people um, and to make mortarboard known. So it is a call to both action and service. And I think the important thing to remember is what we talked a little bit about earlier, the saying, if you want something done, give it to a mortar board. You are the people on your campus who are getting things done and making a difference. Anybody have an idea what an ideal is or anybody want to jump out there with a definition? Yes, Stevens College. Can you stand up and tell us your name? Hi, my name is I'm an idealist. An ideal that you hold, and she mentioned our three ideals, scholarship, leadership, and service. So an ideal is something that you aspire to. It, is, it can even be considered a standard of perfection or excellence. The important thing to think, too, with an ideal, it's not a pillar, it's not, an it's not a piece of architecture, it's not a foundation, it's something inside that we aspire to. So that's kind of what sets Mortarboard apart from other honor societies. The other thing in terms of scholarship, leadership, and service is that Mortarboard is not like any other organization. It's not a club. It's not like any other honor society on your campus for a variety of reasons, but one of them is that it's active lifetime membership. And we're going to talk a lot about that this weekend and hopefully get you inspired to go home and act on your campuses. But we really want to emphasize it's not a club. It's not an honorary. It's different. It's mortar board and it's an honor society. So what do, what do we do in mortar board? Um, so we know we talked about scholarship, leadership, and service, but if, if you ask me, like Sanjo, like, I, you know, I don't know how much we can do on my campus, but what do we absolutely need to do? I mean, I would tell you there's two things you absolutely need to do um, while you're in mortar board. Can I have my next slide? Um, one of them is to give back. So again, that piece on action. So it's not just about, 
oh yay, we're awesome and we're in this organization. It's about what are we doing? What are we doing for our campus? What are we doing um, for our community? What are we doing on a national level? Are we connecting to other chapters? Those kinds of things. So definitely giving back to your alma mater um, and to the community around you. Um, the second thing is to um, continue the chapter on your campus, to select new members. So not only is it something you want to be a part of, but you want to leave a legacy of Mortarboard on your campus. So number one, give back to your alma mater. Number two, um, continue the legacy and select new members. Sounds like things are exciting behind me. Wow. Um, one of the things to think about is how do you structure your year to meet this purpose? And Mortarboard has some great tools to help you plan. When I used to be a section coordinator, I would just look at, you know, we have a year, um, a year in review or a year planning. It's, it's in your chapter planning or your conference guide. But there are some great resources, the most important of which is the chapter action plan. You will turn that in in the fall, and that will include everything that you're going to do for the year. So the most important thing is to plan and then work your plan. Most of you, hopefully, are relatively organized to have gotten this far in your collegiate career and be such a great leader that we want to help you uh, from your section coordinators, your advisors, the Mortarboard National Office, Council, and Foundation to help you be organized. We've really tried to trying to provide those tools to you. You're also going to see award opportunities this weekend. You're going to see people with the Silver and Golden Torch Awards and also the Ruth Weimer Mount Award, as well as the Most Improved Chapter. I hope you'll aspire to receive an award if you don't receive one this year or don't always do better next year. So there's a lot of ways to excel, and we really want to help you do that. So why are we here? Why are we here in Chicago? What's the point, right? I mean, yeah, it's fun. It's an awesome city. Um, but what are we here to learn this weekend? And so what do we want you to get out of it? Um, I would say is a couple things. One, we want to give you an introduction to Mortarboard. Um, we understand that some of you have better transitions than others. Raise your hand if you feel like you didn't get an awesome transition, if you're a lackluster transition. All right, so wait, raise them up again. Look around the room. I want you to say, you are not alone. So it's not, um, don't feel like, oh, I don't know anything. Like, I, um, our gear's gonna be terrible, none of those things. Um, you're not alone in, in not having a good transition or not having a good knowledge of the organization, completely normal, right? So what we're here to do is give, give you an introduction to Mortarboard, tell you what it's all about, tell you how you can um, bring that back to your campus. Um, another thing where our goal is to, um, to help you personally develop. You got a little bit of that um, already um, with Dave Coleman's session, and he will have another session tomorrow. Um, we'll have other sessions that give you skills and tools and tricks to take back to your chapter, to take back to your campus. So some of that personal development. Also chapter development. So we're going to have sessions on operations, sessions on leadership, sessions on sample events you can do, whether that's fundraising, scholarship, leadership, service, reading is leading. So we'll give you some example events that might suit your campus. We're going to focus on membership. Um, who do you select? How do you select them? Why do you select them? All those kinds of things. So uh, it's kind of a threefold purpose um, with conference. Introduce you to Mortarboard, some personal development, and then some chapter development as well. Now who's going to help you do those things? Flip the page. Yeah, give me some thoughts. Who's going to help you learn these things? Yay, me. Yay, Salem's in my section. Um, so, yes, that's one, section coordinators. Who else? Oh, you're cheating. <laughs> no, it's okay. Go back. Um, so, section coordinators. Um, we've talked about people that are in that role, and um, they are definitely there to help you on an individual basis and also help to bring all the chapters in your section together. So, for example, I have North Carolina, South Carolina, and Florida. So, hopefully, the chapters in that section will build some connections, will utilize their resources, me and each other, those kinds of things. Um, each other. So, your peers, um, the people that are in this room that may be in your section or not in your section, that maybe at the same type of institution that you are, whether it's a small school, a big school, a religiously affiliated school, um, so that you can make those connections and say, how does that work on your campus? Tell me how it works. Maybe you have an idea for them as well. So exchanging those ideas with each other. Um, and then our alumni are here as well. So we will have alumni speakers. We will have um, a mini alumni conference tomorrow as well. And so people that are mortar boards who have graduated from their institution are coming back. And so asking them what their experience is like, asking them how they continue to live the ideals of mortar board um, after, after graduation. And so those are definitely people along with the national office staff and the national council that will help you in, in this learning experience here this weekend. Thank you. Going back to a little trivia and who thinks they know about mortar board and this answer was up on the slide earlier tonight, but does anybody know what conference this is? The number conference, so. 
You guys are good. 48. I am impressed. Wow. Yes, this is the 48th National Conference. Now, to think about that for a second, if this is the 48th conference and we have been around for 96 years, can anybody figure out how we missed a few years here and there? Try annual meetings, you guys. I can see why you're mortar boards. Um, but conferences at first were held every two years, and then they went to every three years, and then back to every two years in the 90s. And then at a conference, a student said, this is so great. We need to do this every year. And um, a res or an amendment to the Constitution was passed. And here we are, several years later, having annual conferences. So we're excited that you're here. So for the first 22 conferences, who do you think attended? Women, yes. Raise your hand if you're a woman in this room. Give yourself a pat on the back and say, tell yourself, good job on continuing the legacy. <laughs> if you're a man in this room, raise your hand. What year do you think men first started attending Mortarboard conferences? Close, 75, yes, tell me your name. Good job, Bo Gibbs. Um, so in 1975, men started attending the Mortarboard National Conference. So the first 22 were women only, and then men joined us in 1975. Um, but we do still have a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A commitment to the advancement of women, um, since that is our historical root. So we appreciate both women and the men in this room um, and how we continue to strive for um, the betterment of women on college campuses. Another thing to let you know about is all the awesome resources that you have at your disposal. How many of you have been to the Mortar Board website? Good. How, I guess I should ask, who hasn't been? You can be honest. We we'll support you. Okay, I see you over there. I see you. Okay, that's all right. Um, but we also on our website have a mortar board promotional video that was recently done by a student at Ohio State, and it is great. It is a really good thing. You can post it on your Facebook wall or use it during recruitment. It is really helpful to explain to people what is mortar board. The other thing to know about is our Facebook and social media presence. Um, how many of you are twi twittering or tweeting? I'm not a good Twitterer. I don't use my account. How many of you are tweeting about the conference? Awesome, but also using the leader leaders group. I can see Co Cody up here. Did anybody see Cody? Um, that wasn't? Cody had a fabulous picture of himself today um, on the leading leaders group. He put it on the wrong group, but he was at Wrigley today because I was going through it. I was like, I don't know if Cody's going to be here for the opening session, but he's at Wrigley and he has having fun. So um, we can see, we can learn a lot. He says one's supposed to be there. So I thoroughly embarrassed you, but I appreciate you checking out the city. Um, but the other thing to know about, too, in addition to leading leaders, is our e-newsletters and handbooks and guides. There's a lot of great resources out there for you, so we really hope that you take advantage of those, including the people you're going to meet this weekend, who Sanja will talk to. Yes, I like talking about people. Um, so these resources are great. Websites are great. Facebook is great. Twitter is great. All that stuff's awesome and very valuable and useful. However, I don't think that replaces person-to-person -person interaction. Um, and so I think that's the point of this conference, is for you to meet each other, for you to meet your section coordinators, national leaders, et cetera. And so making sure that we take time this conference to actually have those conversations, talk during sessions, talk during meals, all those other things. And so um, these are definitely people that um, want to help you along your way. Uh, and if not just here at the conference either. So I'm a section coordinator, and I think for the first time ever, um, and I've been a section coordinator for a few years, I had some of my delegates call me before the conference. That has never happened to me. So to those of you in my section who called me, I appreciate that, um, because that makes me feel like I can really serve as a resource to you and that we get to know each other versus just um, on the computer. Um, so definitely call your section coordinators, call the national office, have that personal interaction, even if it's over the phone and not face-to-face, -face, um, because I think you really get something out of that besides um, just the actual online tools. Um, so definitely national leadership, the national office staff, um, your advisors. They may not be in this room right now, um, and some of you may not have advisors who you think are the most awesome people on earth. Um, however, some of you have advisors that maybe you haven't had a conversation with or they don't necessarily understand the passion or you need a new advisor. And so making sure you utilize those advisors because um, they may have campus resources that you don't necessarily have access to. Also, your past officers. Um, again, I know some of you had a rocky transition, um, but those past officers have had an experience um, and any alumni as well. Um, and so using those resources. Um, and then your university community as well. Um, I've worked on a college campus for the past, I don't 
don't know, five or six years. Um, and so we, as someone who works on college campus, we really appreciate when students come in and talk to us. So go talk to your student life staff or student activity staff or campus life or whatever it's called on your campus um, because, again, they may have resources, access to space or copy machines or free banners or free T-shirts or whatever it may be. And so making sure you use all the people around you who can be resources as well. And talking a little bit about the structure, I know you're just being introduced to it and you're seeing people in blue shirts and we're talking about national office and foundation and national council and section coordinators and it can be a little bit confusing, but the biggest thing about our structure is that we're here to support active collegiate chapters. That's what we're here, why we're here, that's why we get together because of the importance of the students. I think someone asked Susan Caples, our national president earlier, why does she do it? And she immediately answered, it's the students. And that's why we're all here, is because of you and the momentum and the passion that you have on your campuses that we're just really excited to help and support. So let's talk about you for a minute. We all like to talk about ourselves, don't we? Uh, or I do, I'll speak for myself. <laughs> um, so um, we want you to know that you're valued. So I want you to turn to your neighbor right now and shake their hand like Dave taught us and say you are valued. Turn to your other neighbor or someone behind you and say, congratulations on becoming a mortar board. So we want you to, we want you to understand that um, you are valued on a number of levels. So you are valued on your campus. Um, the outgoing mortar board members saw something in you and they said, this person is valuable, their contributions, their skill set is valuable, and we need them to be a mortar board member on our campus. So you're valued by your, your peers on your campus. Um, you're also valued by your overall campus. Not every university in the country has a mortar board chapter, right? 229 of them do, um, and those chapters, um, I mean, those campuses have sought out mortar board and said, we need you on our campus. So mortar board as an organization is valued on your campus. Um, and then nationally, from a national perspective, we value all of you taking your time and talent and devoting it to mortar board. That was a choice. Um, you made a choice, and we value that you are contributing to mortar board on a national level. You maybe don't see that always on your campus, but from a national pr perspective, we see it. We see all the amazing work you're doing, and collectively, we're making a difference not only at our alma maters, but also in the university community, or the campus community. One of the other questions to think about is, as our newest generation of leaders, what do you think our founding members would say about our society as we are in our 96th year and where we're going? I think that's just something to think about, but the important thing is that you're a part of history. You're a part of the legacy of Mortarboard. There are many people who have come before you, and hopefully there'll be many people coming after you to continue this, but really think about that. You're part of a national organization. Wherever you go in the country, we can help you find other Mortarboards to connect with, and it's really interesting. A lot of times I meet people, and at my church, for example, recently I was talking to someone. He said, oh, you're a mortar board? I'm a mortar board. And he's the Secretary of State um, for Tennessee. So it was really interesting just, you know, how you meet people and, and connect with them. So you're really a part of history, and there's a lot of great people who are doing good things. And then I mentioned this earlier, but um, we want to reiterate that you're also called to serve. So yes, you're valued. Yes, you're a part of something larger, your, larger than yourself in terms of the history and national perspective of Mortarboard, but you are called to serve as well. You are called to action, to do something at your alma mater, to do something in your campus community, to do something in your region. Um, you'll hear some um, sections that do uh, section projects within their region. And so um, you're called to serve twofold. Um, first and foremost to your alma mater, and second to the community as well. So you're valued, you're part of history, and you're definitely called to serve. So the biggest thing to remember is that Mortarboard is nothing without you, that it is about you, it is about you as our student leaders, that you are the next generation of Mortarboard. And to paraphrase one of our um, initiation ceremony lines, it is the willingness to serve that sets an honor society apart from an honorary. And that's really important and really one of the things that I have found that sets Mortarboard apart is that willingness to serve. And you have shown your willingness by coming here to Chicago in the middle of the summer. And I think Chicago is a great fun place, but many of you came from other great fun places as well. And we just really appreciate you stepping up to serve your chapter. So again, I want you to stand up. And I want us all to face this way, which is my left, your right. 
And I want you, don't do it yet, but I want you to pat the person appropriately, pat the person in front of you on their shoulder um, and say, you're going to have an outstanding year. Okay, turn the other way, because it wouldn't be fair. Turn the other way. Now, pat the person appropriately and say, you're going to have an outstanding year. <laughs> now, I want you to go to the airport and scream, because you've just had a successful year in mortarboard. Go. Go to the airport. <laughs> <laughs>